In this lesson, I'm going to show you about canvas size, which is what you see this white block to be, adjusting that, as well as making a bitmap or a picture as your background on which you're going to create your animation. And then finally, um, adding sound as a background to the animation. All right, so first of all, canvas size. We have our selection tool selected, and we'll just have a blank dock open here. Now, while this blank canvas is open, how big do you suppose that is? Well, down here, under our properties panel, we see the size of our canvas. So that's why when we do test movie, we see it so big on our screen. This determines how big the canvas or our animation is going to be. So this can be adjusted here manually. So we can change the pixels. We can change the frame rate if we wanted to, but you may not mess with that until you're more an advanced user. User, sorry. Um, you can also title the document here and give a description. All right. Now here we've changed this before. Background color. Now if we click on it, well we have all sorts of different colors. But do you notice what's missing here? That is in the color panel or the swatches tab. Well, if we just go back to what this was, white. Over here in, let's minimize our library panel, open up our color panel. Now here, when we choose what the fill color is and what the stroke color is, we're given this option. Solid color or a linear or radial um, gradient, which we've used before, or bitmap. But these options don't exist, because this is just for fills, for the actual background canvas. We can only choose a color. So how would we do that? How would we create a background that was an actual uh, JPEG or picture if we can't change it here? Well, very simply, what we're going to do is create a square on top of the canvas that matches this, these exact dimensions. And once we create that square, we can then change that square to our bitmap or picture. So something to pay attention to is our canvas size, 550 by 400. So let's choose our rectangle tool. And now let's change our fill to a bitmap. And let's pick this axiomatic preview we've used before. And you've seen. You can pick anything you want. Double click. There it is. Um, at this point, we could choose a border or no border. Let's choose no border or stroke. Whoops. Make sure we have it selected. And then choose the little line through diagonal line, no color. So now, as we draw our square, there'll be no stroke, as we can see down here in the Properties tab, as well as up here in the Color panel. Now, how big do we want it? Well, let's. we can try to match it up as close as we can to the canvas, like so. But how do we get it exact? Well, let's pick our Selection tool. And then once we pick that square, we are given the width 521.8 and 353.9. Well, now do we remember what the, the size of the canvas was? Well, if we forgot, we can simply click on the canvas, and we see 550 by 400. So now let's click on the actual um, square we created. And now we can change the width to 550 by 400. Now it's the exact size, and we could try, let's bring this down a little bit, we could try to match it up manually, right? Bring it over here, let it try to snap to, we might get it pretty close. But let me show you another tool that can help you. So up in the windows, let's choose the Align panel. 
And this is going to prove very useful for you. And now over here, make sure we, we pick a line to stage. And that is the canvas size, our stage. So whatever selected here, we can then choose what kind of alignment we want. Align it left, align horizontally, center, align right edge, align top edge, align vertical center, align bottom edge, match size, match width, all sorts of really neat options. In this case, we're going to pick align horizontal center, and it perfectly aligns it. And we can also do the same thing with vertical center, and we can see it was slightly off. So now it's perfectly covering our canvas. So now we could click anywhere outside the box, and we could then create another layer, and then create our animation on top of that picture. Now what we could have done to make it a little more interesting is instead of making it um, the exact size of the canvas, what we could have done is reduced it maybe by, let's say, 20 on each side. Um, so that would be 540, 530, and then got to bring this up a little bit in order to see our height. And we'll reduce this by 20, which will make it 380. Like so. And now let's realign. Realign. And now we have a slight border, which we could create. We could select this simply, go back to our color panel, and change our stroke color to something else. But we'd have to know exactly what that distance is between that. So instead, what we do is we click on the background canvas and simply change it to whatever we want. Maybe we wanted a, a dark blue, like so. So now we could go up to test movie. And we have this nice little blue border around our flash animation that we would have. So that's the way to put the picture in the background. Now, let's say we had some smaller objects on the screen. So let's say we had, uh, let's say, um, some red squares. I'm just going to make something up. Let's put this on layer 2. Red square. I'm going to copy it and paste and paste again and now we should have three if I move this out of the way so rather than trying to align them ah see I put them on the wrong layer alright let's undo Okay, so make sure we're on layer 10 here, as it's called. We could change that if we wanted. Ah, see, there's the problem. So we want to paste. Once we click on that background, it then switched to layer 9. So if we stay on that square, we're going to get our 3, like so. So now, if we wanted to align them all to the same height without manually having to do it, we simply hold down Shift as we select each one, and then we can align top edge, and that would align them up top there. So here's one way of doing it, or align them on the bottom. And then as we move them, it moves them all in place too. So. The same thing can be done, a lot of different variations of alignment that will prove very useful for you. Um, distribute to left edge, like so, evenly disperses them. Um, and some of our match width, match height, you can use on your own and experiment with that. Um, space evenly vertically, and depending on what you have selected and where it's at, um, it's going to align it in a different way. All right. In our next lesson, we're going to insert 
some sound onto a picture. So that's it for this lesson.